So how are you doing tonight, Tara? We're doing okay. Um, somebody was nice enough to anonymously send us matching Captain America bracelets. <laughs> okay. Dan's doing a whole like Captain America thing with his chemo and everything. He's, he's doing the whole I could do this all day thing. So people have been sending him like all kinds of Captain America t-shirts and stuff. I'm just excited that he switched from Team Iron Man to Team Cap. <laughs> I mean, well, all it took was a pancreatic tumor. But you, you, I, I'm I'm kind of concerned though, because once you know, like the real bad side effects of the chemo kick in for years from now on, it's gonna be like one of those Pavlov responses. Every time he sees Captain America, he's gonna think about <laughs> he's gonna about thinking about puking his guts up. Yay! No. <laughs> Pe Peggy's asleep behind my monitor. Uh, dude, I'll tell you. All right, here's a, here's a stupid me story from when I was a child, just one of these uh, associations. When I was a kid, I had a hole in my bone and a cyst in the hole and had to remove it. And I was in the hospital that night and the only I only got one channel on, on the hospital television and it was, it was, here I am, I was like, I think 10, 11, something like that, and it was playing Unsolved Night Mysteries. And I'm in the hospital as a very young, by myself Which is overnight. Scary. And I'm sharing a hospital room with somebody who had to be at least seventy, who is hacking and wheezing all through the night. So all I've got to watch is unsolved mysteries, and I have that. So now, from now, then on, whenever I heard the unsolved mysteries theme, I I just I get fnipped up by it forever. So they didn't have you in pe in pediatrics. Nope, nope, they did not. They were they were full. It's pretty weird. Mm -hmm. But now, just every. I, when I was born, I was such a nice. behemoth of a baby. They literally, I was born 23 inches long, 10 pounds, 8 ounces. I was a beast. I didn't fit in the bassinet <laughs> for the newborn. So they had to bring a crib down from pediatrics because I was a monster baby. I was born a toddler. <sighs> All right. Two facts about the tarot. Are we ready? We should have Steve Frank do that sometime. No. No, let's... That would be really fun. We don't have that much money. To... Um, are we ready? Yes. Okay, let's get the intro going. Just gonna reset my life. Each week... Catherine, Radio Dead Air, audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring back here for a little segment we like to call, What the Fuck is Wrong With You? And uh, we're starting tonight with, with I guess, what do we call this? Tales from the Dystopia? That's that's a good way of, of considering it. I've got fucking windows everywhere. Get, get Move, move. Ah, uh, screen capture, you're so much fun. Um, So, one of the things you've heard all of the news folks desperately reporting on it, it, all in a kerfluffle all flapping about losing their minds is nobody wants to work which which is we've lost like almost what, what, like 600,000 people have died and yeah. others were like I ain't gonna put up with this shit no more People um, figured out that they don't have to take abuse for pennies. We've lost control of the plebeians. So, and they're like, why doesn't anyone want to work? And um, th this story came up today, and I was like, gee, I wonder fucking why. A $399 speaking speaking closed-circuit television used in some 7-Eleven stores, asks a worker whether they've paid for an iced coffee they've grabbed from the fridge. Ugh. So how this works, for $3.99 a month, $400 a month. Which you can pay your employees. What they do is this service will watch your, your store through the camera and it will monitor not only what's going on in the store, it will monitor your employees. And, like, even fucking bother them. If they, Did you pay for that? Like, the, the fucking people who work there. Jesus Christ. And here's, here's the, the, the crazy fucking one. 
Uh, in another video, the remote operator intervenes in an armed robbery, startling two attackers, one of whom is carrying a gun. The two men are shown That's running great. away before the operator asks the cashier to call 911. Like he wasn't gonna. Like he what was you just... want to do is startle people with a gun that, that are... they have on your employees. I worked as a freelancer in, for a cosmetics brand for a while, which shall remain nameless. And right before I left, they made us all download this app on our phone. It rhymes with Remora. Huh? No, that I worked for that store, but I did freelance work for oh. one of the brands sold there. Um, they made us all download an app on our phone that they said, like, this is going to be, it's going to make it way easier to file your hours because we're going to have time cards. You won't have to email. What it also did was track your location. So that, like, if it was a slow day at whatever store they sent you to and you ran to Starbucks, your supervisor would then text you and be like, why aren't you in the store? It's... Someone in the channel mentioned, like, it's like that building in Gremlins 2. Hey, pal, I sure hope you wash those hands. I mean, and the thing is, if you if you pay your workers a decent wage and you treat them like humans, they will be trustworthy enough that you don't need shit like this. Yes, yeah, it's called yeah, incentives. <laughs> it, it's called incentivizing people. It, I mean, when back in my parents day when my dad was fucking working he had a fucking pension he had benefits he he knew fucking all right terrible company but at&t they got you cradle mm -hmm. to grave back then okay yeah. fucking you all that shit now they will you were well until the fucking pandemic your ass was considered disposable yeah they would hold that over your fucking head and then they wonder, they're like, why don't we have any loyalty? Why don't people want to stay here? Because you don't treat us like humans. Yeah, you're fucking, it, like, shit, dogs wouldn't put up with these circumstances. Yeah. And dogs will put up with a lot. Like, Ugh. you actually treat people well, they will fucking ride or die for you. You I, treat them like this? I had, when I was in high school, I worked for a, uh, and, and I, I volunteered for a, a community theater. Didn't pay me a dime, but they treated me so fucking good that if you, I would have taken a bullet for the building. Yeah. Okay. If you came by and tried to put like a bullet through the fucking window. I'd be like, no, that's how much, because they tried. The rescue, the cat rescue I worked at in New Jersey. I didn't make any money. I was a volunteer. And I started out two days a week. By the time I left, I was there almost five days a week. I was doing all kinds of extra stuff because they were wonderful people. Yeah. And I wanted to help them. And, you know, cute cats. Yeah, cats Doesn't help. Hurt. But uh, more tales from the dystopia. We got a couple tonight. Um, this Dude, one's... I lose everybody. My this light one... is weird tonight. This one's uh, Florida. And oh my God, so, I, someone has never been this fired in their entire fucking life. I was horrified. Largo woman discovers one billion in her Chase bank account. Largo, Florida. Julia Yankowski, uh, right, went to her local Chase bank in Largo on Saturday to withdraw some money, but she wanted to check her balance first. According to the bank receipt she received, Yonkowski had nine hundred and ninety nine million nine hundred eighty five thousand eight hundred fifty five dollars and ninety four cents in her account. You can imagine being shocked was an understatement. Oh, my God. I was horrified. I know some people think they won the lottery, but I was horrified. I would be terrified. Yeah, she'd be like, because it's not like one of those. Oh, I'm gonna grab money and run. Number one, you ain't withdrawing a billion dollars from the ATM. I'm sorry, that's just not happening. I wouldn't even take out 20, because yeah. I'd be like, no, no, I want every penny accounted for. Because that's like, oh my god, did a fucking drug lord get mixed up with my account? <sighs> I, is, this is going to be like no country for fucking old men with a goddamn ATM. Um, I got a bonus from a job once that they didn't tell me about, and it just got direct deposited to my account, and I was freaking the fuck out. 
So I was like, I didn't steal from the company. They're going to think I stole from the company. What do I do? Oh my God. How do I return this money? And I called my manager and she's like, Oh no, you got a sales bonus. And I was like, do you not understand the panic I've been in all day? <laughs> Since becoming a temporary billionaire, she's tried several times to reach out to Chase Bank. This is the fired part. I just can't get through. I get tied up with their automated systems and I can't get a person. Eight on your side news also reached out to Chase Bank, but no one was available to speak. So pretty much everybody was like, hey, we have a billion of your dollars. What should we do? I, I would like to give your money back and more importantly, not go to prison. Is there some rule like, you know, if they don't respond within three days, it's yours. Is it like with the lost and found? I wouldn't fucking risk it. <laughs> I, I don't have money for that kind of lawyer. Well, I mean, there is always, you know, quickly Googling which countries don't have extradition laws. Like hunting down to fucking Panama and being like, get this shit out of my account and put it somewhere for me, okay? But like, can you imagine like that? Because it's our American dystopia, that's not exciting. That's no. legitimately scary. Yeah. Because you're, like when it happened to me, like I was just legitimately picturing myself being crushed under the big boot heel of a major corporation mm. for maybe having stolen $2,000. What's terrifying is the, the interest from that billion dollars sitting there for just five minutes is worth more than that person's entire account, probably. For for like a year. Just five minutes of, of compound interest. God damn. I really, if two people try to reach out and no answer, it's yours. You know what? She, I'm, I'm kind of like, I can get, I could book a plane. I could book, why not? I can book a plane. I would be paralyzed with fear. I, I mean, that's, I think, very, that's my reaction to most changes to my environment because I really am a giant house cat. Like, if anything in my life changes, I am immediately paralyzed with fear. I'd be like, I, I'm not sitting here. I, I could live in a, in a tropical country for the rest of one tropical country for the rest of my life and never travel anywhere. I could do that pretty well. Yeah, I, I, I'd be pretty happy with that. <laughs> I could, I could be a George. A billion dollars? I could build my own fiber optic network. I wouldn't have to worry about the internet. I mean, yeah, I just, yeah. That'd be pretty good. <laughs> Every week you'd be like, Radio Dead Air, coming to you from an undisclosed location. location. Yep. <laughs> Come find me, motherfucker. What you time zone am I in? None of your fucking business. <laughs> uh, we have uh, yet another adventure of uh, guns are not a remote control for life. This time someone's playing on hard mode from Jacksonville, Florida. Man pulled gun on chief's daughter over cream cheese. Angry Florida man pulled a gun on a drive through worker because they forgot the cream cheese with his bagel, according to Miami Gardens police. The employee just happened to be the daughter of the police chief. Bad luck, old chum. They say the man became angry at a Starbucks drive through when they messed up his order earlier this week, returned to the window, screaming at the employees. She asked whether he had paid for the cream cheese, at which point he became enraged and pulled out a gun. 100% believe this. Having worked at Starbucks, people are insane. Chief Delma Noel Pratt told uh, CBS4 the experience traumatized her 23-year-old daughter. The chief's daughter told police the man did not point the gun at her, but she feared he would hurt her if she'd not give him the cream cheese. You held up. You held up a Starbucks. Over cream cheese. Cream. You are going to jail for cream cheese. This is not, and the, you know, if you threaten you someone's life, you can't plead this one down because this was the chief's police chief's daughter. You are fucked yourself forever. Now, it's not right. It's not proper. It's nepotism and abuse of the system. But that's the police chief's daughter. He has power. I'm going to use that power over you. 
you know, this is a case in which I'm fine with the nepotism because maybe don't pull your gun on yeah. a barista over cream cheese. I'm <laughs> glad it was the chief of police daughter. Yeah. I'm glad you are so fucked. Yeah. Like you, you deserve that. You're a criminal. Yeah. It's being held on $10,000 bond. Unclear if he has an attorney. Uh, faces several charges, including aggravated assault with a firearm. And I want to point this out yet again, because people, I've seen comments, people don't get this. If you take out your gun and you point it at someone, or you point it some, around someone, that's assault. I don't, toys. That's not my opinion. That's not something we can argue. That's the nope. law. That qualifies as assault. Even if it's not a real gun. That's assault. I don't know where you people think you've got your legal degrees, but Kellogg's and and uh, General Mills, they don't, that's not. A, what if you point it at yourself? Don't. Oops. Guns are not toys. Everybody, everybody, everybody. Lean in real close to your computer and say it with me. Guns are not toys. Not toys. No other country in, in the world has to deal with this shit. Every now and then I have to tell one of my cats when they've stolen something expensive off my makeup vanity. That's not toys. Do you know... That's toys. England for a while had what they termed an emergency situation. It was, it was an epidemic. It was a crisis. Because... People were going into pubs and busting the pint glasses and using the handles as weapons, sharp weapons. And fucking Britain freaked the fuck out. And we're like, y'all are on like easy mode. <laughs> what's, that, what's that like to just go to a public place and not have to look at where the exits are? We were in Target the other day. And Dan legit was like, oh, hey, I've been meaning to tell you this. This door right here, if if there's a shooter, this is the door you look for. These are conversations other countries don't have to have. Nope. Well, we have a... Oh, this is, this is a bless your heart crime. This is... Bless your fucking heart. You tried. Okay. All right. Um, remember a while back we had that lady who stole the U-Haul and just took it home with her. Yeah. Well, this one put in more effort. I will give him that. Blossville man allegedly tries to disguise stolen U-Haul with black spray paint. <laughs> okay. Blossville man is accused of stealing a U-Haul, spray painting it to disguise his identity. Arrested New York State Police. Austin Wisemore, 25. He left the logo on the windshield, though. <laughs> There's the picture. Oh, God. Can I make the picture bigger? I can't. But, yeah, it's it's right there above the above the, the visor, above the, the rear view. I want to I take care of that. Austin <laughs> Wisemore drove the U-Haul from Florida to New York in March. The police say he never returned to the company. U-Haul location in Florida reported report the vehicle stolen. Then on Wednesday, police found the van at a property on Preston Hill Road, the town of Rama, Vienna, during a burglary investigation. Part of the van was black from spray paint, but the U-Haul logo was still visible on the front windshield. <laughs> they say the spray paint caused more than 10,000 in damage. Wisemore is also accused of removing the catalytic converter which is worth more than a thousand dollars. Were you stripping it for parts? <laughs> While he was still driving it to a burglary. <laughs> you need that. No, you, you technically don't need the catalytic converter. That That's an anti-pollution measure. Why is it a thousand dollars? Because it has platinum. Catalytic converter has platinum inside of it. That's bullshit. <laughs> I thought it was important to the car. No, catalytic converter, that, that was a requirement. It's like your car's appendix? Yeah, it, well, it's, it's there to process. It's, it's, it processes pollution and, and tries and reduces output. It does, obviously doesn't do a whole ton, but it's required by law. Yeah, ask Dan about catalytic converters. 
You don't need them. You can remove it from the car. It'll still drive just fine. It'll just be putting out... It, it will be belching fucking pollution. <laughs> so it actually does do something. It just doesn't do it a lot. It's, yeah, it's, I thought your car couldn't run without it. It's, it's not the appendix. It's more like the car's spleen. Like the gallbladder. Yeah, it's kind of like the it's kind of like the car's gallbladder. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it, and it has uh, it has it uses the catalytic converter uses platinum. That's how that works. That's why it's worth a thousand dollars. That's also why airbags get stolen a bunch because there's gold in airbags. Oh, I did not know these things. Yep. Yeah, because airbags actually have have they have gold in. Why? I, I, I that one I don't. I guess I could Google that instead of wasting yeah. time on the show. <laughs> We're not doing car talk. Bless his fucking heart, though he tried. Oh, <laughs> he tried. He left the logo. He left the you all logo on. <laughs> he, he, you know what happened? You know exactly what happened. Two things. He couldn't pry it off with his fingernail. And he ran out of spray paint. Just throw a fucking bumper sticker on it, man. <laughs> you drove from Florida to uh, New York. I promise you passed some rest stops. Just get a Virginia is for lovers and slap it on there. Yeah, RPG holic, the golds and the electrical connections. Yeah, it's because... And I'm someone will definitely correct me if I'm wrong about this in the comments, but gold does not corrode. Gold as as an electrical connector does not get any. It doesn't degenerate. And since it's the airbag, that ensures that the airbag will always function because the gold doesn't. The electrical connections will never wear down because otherwise, electrical connect connections will get oxidation on them and they'll they'll stop making because two different types of metals and blah 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 so yeah there's gold in there gotcha. well thank you we're learning shit the more you know but not to be outdone let's go from stealing a car to stealing a mobile felony local mail truck stolen found with a surprise and i've got to tell you it's not but the very first thing i thought when when they said surprise was oh no did someone poop in there it yeah, didn't it was, okay good but i mean it's not luke's week so yeah <laughs> the fox That's 8 IT, the fox 8 i team has uncovered a story of what happened inside when a thief stole a local mail truck um a woman uh, called the police saying he just stole a mail truck she watched her mail going to the wrong zip code man hopped in the truck and drove away the women told police the man driving off at first badgered them to use a phone the witness who called 911 said then he saw the mail truck and i'm like maybe he's asking that guy for a ride and he didn't he got in the truck and drove all the way down there um let's see uh carrie told police got the mail i got the mail walked up somebody came back he was taken off um when the police got there they met the suspect this is this is wild. Why'd you take the mail truck? The suspect answered, a U-Haul. The officer responded, I, I don't think that's a U-Haul. But inside, police found more than mail, than mail in the truck. They found a big screen TV! Mail carrier determined no mail was missing, but had no explanation for how the TV was added. Did so, he have the TV when he was asking the women about the phone? I don't know. I think what he did was he tried to use the mail truck as he to move the TV. To move the TV. We don't That's know. Federal. That's federal. You don't fuck with the postal service. No, at all. Don't even. Don't even look sideways. They are a federal fucking agency. Yep. I. I. Did you really think that was like a public use? Yeah, that's not like a rental. It's not a ride share. It's not a zip car. You, you, you can't, can't just move your TV and then return it. Yeah, I, I, I got you an air freshener, man. Here you go. <laughs> like, stop. You can't do that shit. The poor guy has shit to do. What? No, I topped it off. It's fine. Oh, my God. 
It's not a fucking U-Haul. You are going to the serious jail. Yeah. That, yeah, that is fuck around with the postal service, man. Like when I was a kid, those fuckers who would go around with a baseball bat. I don't know if this this actually was a thing kids would do. They go around the baseball bat and they knock people's mailboxes over. Yep. That get your ass in fucking trouble. Yep. You, you can't, dude. We have. Don't fuck with the mail. They're very they're they're a little uptight about that one. You wouldn't know it recently because we're trying to dismantle the postal right, service. Yes. But generally they take that shit pretty serious. But God help you if you ever get in a car accident, like a, even a fender bender with a mail truck. That's oh, yeah. that's your afternoon. That's your afternoon, your whole week right there. Cause damn. Why the why the fucking I either he stole I want to know it, where he manifested the TV from. Yeah, either he stole it or is like, okay, I'll come by, help you move the TV. But my car broke down, so luckily there was this one that was already running. <laughs> Didn't have a door though. That's weird. <laughs> and the the wheel was on the wrong side, so that was just yeah, it's like European or something. <laughs> Fuck me. All right, finally, we got video. God help us. Everyone was passing this around today because we're all like, yay. Yep. Um, this is from Minnesota. A lot of the stories come from Minnesota. It makes me sad. Uh, this is inside a grocery store. And nope. But fucking, fucking nope. C can we see that again? Let's let's see if we can try to chase the trace the exact moment. When the dude nopes, there he is, and nope. Done. Oh my god! Absolutely fucking done. So yet again, yeah, the dude's like, I definitely do not get paid enough for this shit, <laughs> and he's right. Teens, teens light fireworks display inside Hy-Vee in Egan, Minnesota. Um, so. Uh, police took a uh, a group of teenagers into custody after they reportedly set a fireworks display on fire inside a Hy-Vee grocery store. Inside a grocery store. We'll circle back to that. In Egan, Minnesota. Yeah, why are they selling fireworks at the grocery we'll store? We'll circle back to that. Police and firefighters responded to the incident. Crews were able to put out the fire, but filled the store with smoke, closing it Monday afternoon. No one was injured. The amount of damage is still being determined. Three boys, ages 14, 15, 16, were arrested and released. The Cody County Attorney's Office is considering charges. Case remains under investigation. You know, first of all, yeah, let's let's go to that one. Um, why the fuck do we have a pile of explosives in the middle of a grocery store? I was at Target like like two days ago, and there's right in the middle of the aisle. There's one of those uh those those Jesus. Just pile of fucking fireworks in the middle of the goddamn target. And I looked at that and I'm like, somebody's gonna set that shit on fire. And like, I we was have big old fireworks superstars superstores here. And even that's weird to me, because I'm from New York, where fireworks the answer is no. Yeah. You cannot have them and fuck you. Yeah. So and even that's weird to me that like within five miles, we have three giant stores of just fireworks. Oh, you go down I-95 a couple ways here in, in South Carolina. There's there's a couple spots where it's just like, you know, here, fucking giant building full of fireworks, like the size of a grocery store, just yeah. wall to wall fucking fireworks. But even this, I mean, at, at the at the. But I don't think I've ever seen them at the King Supers. They do that here. They put them in, in the stores here. And I, for one thing, okay. In the Target, just my local store, the electric toothbrushes are in a locked display. Yeah. Over in the Walmart, which also does the fireworks, the electric toothbrushes. God help you if you want to buy like Sudafed. There, the electric toothbrushes are in a locked display. The KY is in a locked display. The fucking KY. They lock it up so the youngins can't do the sexing. I mean, they can't. They're just going to use Vaseline and get an infection. <laughs> but.
the actual goddamn explosive devices are just left. Now, whatever you might think, oh, yeah, we got to lock up the valuable stuff because that's going to stolen. It's not a question of what gets stolen. Maybe no. like the lock up the fucking explosives. Yeah. That's like, what, would you just leave a, like a basket of grenades just sitting out? Here, take one. No, it's... Th th you lock that shit up! I mean, that depends. Are we talking about Texas? Well, yeah, okay. At this point. Because I think when you, like, graduate junior high in Texas, you're issued an AR-15 and a grenade. <laughs> is... What? This is not the first time it's happened. This is not the last time it's happened. These are incendiary devices made specifically for the purpose of blowing the fuck up. Yeah. Easily. Readily. They're, they're so simple a child could do it, quite literally. And you're just going to be like... We should take even the most basic precaution. No, nah, let's just throw those on an end cap next to the Red Bull. So that's... Uh... Where... We're a bunch of fucking idiots in this country. Yes. Yes, we are just like, God. But we're a bunch of fucking idiots who think we're the hottest shit ever. And we're wrong. So yes, yeah. It's the first thing we, we've learned this week is uh, we, we take more care in preventing children access to prophylactics. Than we and do allergy medicine and allergy medicine than we do actual Big fucking explosion. Jeez. And I, I, you know, everyone was saying that, but that, I want to see that kid one more time because that, that is a mood. This dude, this dude is an entire oh, mood. Kid probably makes nine dollars an hour. Fuck that. Here he goes. He, he takes out his phone, he takes a picture of it, and fucks off. And the reason he took a picture of it was why, why weren't you, why weren't you stocking the shelves? Fucker. Yeah, because they were on fire. The shelves were. And you on. know what? That might not even be a good excuse, according you know, depending on the manager. Hey, hey, hey! Well, you could work around the fire. No. And you know who's having to clean that shit up? Him. Him. Yeah, he's he's. It, well, unless he fucking that, that that's one of those I quit moments. Um. Before we uh, we've learned that the mail truck is it's it's not public utility. No, it's not like take a penny, leave a penny. It's 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 like this city has, you know, how like some cities have bikes you can just rent for the day. Denver yeah. has scooters. We have like razor scooters and you can leave uh, them anywhere. You don't have to park them anywhere. Those like, things are a plague. But like you'll just see people zipping all over the metro area on scooters and you can literally leave them fucking anywhere. The mail car, the mail truck is not that. We've also learned that. Just because you spray paint the stolen car doesn't mean you've effectively cloaked it. He left the you all. He went through all the trouble. And man, I have spray painted. I spray painted our front steps. Um, I've spray, I, I've, I have gone through all the trouble of actually going through spray. I spray painted this desk. I, I, I changed it from you know, ugly wood grain to white. It takes a lot of time. And the fact that he blocked out the windows. It's it's not super expensive, but it takes some money. And you did this for no God. It did. It's not, it just couldn't be ours to slap a bumper sticker over the logo. That's like you put in like all that effort for no good. Um, we've learned you might. I wanted to say, be careful who you point guns at, but maybe we just say, don't, don't point guns at people. Just, just don't, just don't do that. I fucking hope you don't get out of jail forever. I um, would think that would be easy, but apparently fucking not. We've learned it's possible in our system to accidentally wind up with a billion dollars in your bank account and not be able to tell anybody. <laughs> not be able to give it back. Can I give back this billion? No, no one will be you because customer service has completely disintegrated. To, you can have a big a billion dollars and be like, we do live in a fucking dystopia, man. Yeah, and finally we've learned that uh, just maybe if you want to keep people working at your 
your your stores don't surveil them with just treat them like humans and they I, and they offshore they will literally try anything but that they offshored the surveillance to india like they will try anything but basic human decency yeah but then you don't get to feel like you own people yeah that's not fun 